Hello and welcome to Dust Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly and I invite you to the wonderful world of MS Dust Gaming. Today I'm going to review one of my favorite games of all time, Another World. Published in 1991 by Interplay and renamed Out of This World in the States, the game was groundbreaking. I still remember the first time I saw the intro. Even this first bit with the car left such an impression on me. You play as a man with the most impossible name ever, Professor Lester Knight Chiking, who apparently likes to run particle accelerator tests on dark and stormy nights. A lightning strikes and he is transported to another world. First thing you learn is that if you don't uh, quickly react to the environment, you die. After you die a few times and learn your way around, you'll run into the first in-game cutscene. And this is where the game really shines. I personally think that this is the first action game to use cutscenes during the gameplay to enhance uh, players' emotional involvement with the characters. Some will argue that Prince of Persia had that thing with the princess and the vizier, your reflected self and that mouse, but while I'm not denying that another world owes a lot to Prince of Persia, I still think it's the level of innovation that qualifies it as a first in this aspect. I mean, when you see your alien buddy who was fighting alongside with you all this time get captured, you just become enraged. On the other hand, uh, the ending almost makes me cry. A few people would argue that the game is seriously lacking in the gameplay department. And yes, a lot of it is based on repetition, dying and restarting and trying new things, but I don't think it's frustrating, and I think it's fun to figure out the solutions to the puzzles, which for the most part I think are quite brilliant, and are all based on interaction with the environment. And the game throws a lot of variety at you. My only complaint is that in the middle of the game you're supposed to do a few things in certain order to proceed and that order might not be all that clear from the beginning. But it's still not all that hard to figure it out. The action parts of the game mostly involve firing your gun, making shields or running and jumping and they're actually quite easy in my opinion. I also would like to mention the controls, which are simplistic. You have your usual directional arrows and an action button, that's it. The action button is used for pretty much everything. Running, kicking, firing your gun, making shields and so on. Contrary to what it may sound like, it's actually quite intuitive and easy. Now let's talk about the graphics, which are nothing short of amazing. Eric Chai, the developer of the game, used uh, vector graphics instead of bitmaps to create full-screen animations that didn't require a lot of space or memory. He also traced real footage, a process that's called rotoscoping, to achieve more fluid animations. The results speak for themselves. The IBM PC version of this game is somewhat a definitive one. It has more balance, more safe points for the game password safe system, and uh, more levels. It's my favorite version amongst all considering that the game was released for every major format of the 90s and every version is slightly different. I love this game. Everything about it is great. Even now, 18 years later, most modern games don't quite measure up to it. And the best part is, it was re-released by the author for its 15th anniversary, so go on this website and buy it. It's $9. Do it now. And this is it for this episode of Dust Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly, see you next time, and thank you for watching.